Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform a USB BAS flashback on this motherboard here. This is the MSI B850-P Wi-Fi. This is actually one of the more budget-orientated boards on the MSI B850 lineup. And I think it's going to be one of those ones which a lot of people are going to end up in their systems with, whether it's from OEMs or whether you're doing your own build. And if you are doing your own build, or potentially if you're getting this from an OEM and you've got it in the system, it's always worth keeping your BIOS updated. And one of the easiest ways of doing it is the USB BIOS flashback method. Now I will say straight away, if your PC is actually functioning, you can actually see the screen, then you might as well just update the BIOS from actually within the BIOS itself. It is a lot safer to do it that way and also doesn't involve any real modifications to the system. You can just plug in the USB drive and you're off to the races. We'll show you how to create the USB drive a little bit later on in the video. But for those people that are buying the system and possibly this is your new board and you've got a new processor, which potentially might not be supported directly by the motherboard, although at the time of recording, most of them actually are. But there's new CPUs coming out all the time, so potentially you might want to do an update or if you're just someone who is somewhat security conscious or you want the latest platform on your motherboard, then doing a USB BAS flashback is one of the options you can use. Now also as well, I will say, obviously, you don't have to do it on a bare board like I'm doing here. The reason I do it on a bare board is twofold. One, it's easier for me to show all the components and also I don't have to build a complete system and also we can rule out any other components in the system actually preventing the bars from flashing. If you have a faulty component or a component which isn't quite set up right, then potentially your system may not boot at all, in which case, obviously that's gonna cause you problems. So starting off with a bare shell is the way to go, but as always, if you want to do it on a fully built system, you certainly can do. Now, some of the things you're gonna need for performing this box flashback, something to put the motherboard on, ideally motherboard box is absolutely fine, or if it's in a case, that's great as well. You'll need a USB drive, which is 32 gigabytes or less. This is because we need to format this in the FAT32 file system. Now potentially there's other ways of doing it with larger drives, you can create a smaller partition. We have done a separate video on that. We'll try and link that in the video description for you also. And realistically, the other thing you're gonna need is the PC power supply. So normally it's gonna be an ATX because this is an ATX format, but I've got our SFX one here, which is small and handy. So I'm gonna use that. Now there's two connections which will need to be connected to the motherboard if you're doing it as a bare setup. And that is the main 24 pin power connector and also one of the eight pin EPS connections, which go to the top left hand side of your motherboard as shown in the picture. Also, you will need access to the internet to actually download the BIOS and also extract the file, unzip it, etc. That can be done on both Windows PCs and also Macintosh and potentially Linux as well. I've never tried Linux, but possibly you can do. So I think we've pretty much covered everything so far. So let's head on over to the computer and we'll get the drive formatted and ready. Then we'll download the BIOS and unzip it and rename it as appropriate. And then we'll get on to the flashing process after. So we're on our Windows 11 desktop. We've uh, got our MSI site up already, but let's start off with the USB drive. So we'll plug that in. Uh, potentially you may get yours pop up on screen, but for us, it's just showing here. So the first thing you want to do is just to check the format. You can do that by going into the format command after right clicking on the drive. Make sure that the file system is set to FAT32, not NTFS or XFAT. Those won't work. And the allocation size just set to default. If there's anything in the volume label, it's worth removing that just to be on the safe side. Some systems don't like it if there is a volume label on the disk, it confuses the setup. Anyway, make sure a quick format is selected when you're ready. Obviously this will erase anything which is on the drive, but we'll start anyway. You will get a warning anyway. So if you're happy to go ahead, click on okay. And that should take no time at all. So there is our drive formatted. So we can close that now. We don't need that at the moment. So the next thing to do is to actually get the BIOS for our motherboard. In order to do that, go to the MSI site for your specific board. In this case, obviously this is the Pro B850-P Wi-Fi. When you're on the site, head over to the support tab. And on the support tab, the first one is gonna be BIOS generally. If not, you can just click on these tabs. So for utilities, drivers, etc. but we want BIOS. And generally, depending on how old the board is, you're probably best off going for the very latest one. Now, some people may find if you go for the very latest BIOS and your board has got a very old BIOS on it, then you might wanna just go for something a little bit older to begin with if you're getting problems. 
For me, in this case, the board, as far as I know, is pretty much brand spanking new. So it should be moderately up to date. So I'm gonna go for the very latest one. Now this particular latest boss doesn't actually do a great deal other than improving memory compatibility, which is always a thing with DDR5, and also optimize the secure erase mechanism which isn't particularly important to us. You may find on some of yours, it may support new AGISA codes or mitigating security issues. As BIOSes go, they are rolled up. So anything which is in the previous BIOS will be included in the more modern versions. So we're gonna go for the latest version, which is around about a month ago. So we'll click on download and we'll save it to a suitable location. I'm gonna save it to the Windows desktop for ease. You can save it wherever you like to, as long as you can find it. So click on save, and that is our file downloaded. So we can close this window down, we no longer need that. Now we can go over to our BIOS file, which is currently in a zipped format. So we need to unzip this. So if we right click on it and choose extract all, and we'll just use the default location there and click on extract. And there we go, there is our folder. And inside the folder is a text file and also the BIOS file. Check to see the BIOS file is the correct size. It should be around about 32 megabytes. In this instance, it is 32,768 kilobytes. So that's fine. If you are doing the BIOS update from actually within the BIOS, you can leave this file name as it is and just put this onto your USB stick and flash the BIOS from actually within the BIOS. Although if you are doing it as a bare system and you're using the USB BIOS flashback, then you will need to rename this file. So in order to do that, make sure that you can see the file extension, which we can here. If for some reason you can't, you can go to view, then go down to show, and then choose file name extensions. So in order to rename the file, just click on the actual description once or twice until it's highlighted, then remove everything which is there, and then type in msi.rom or rom. When you're happy, press enter. And it will give you a warning saying if you change the file name extension, it may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Well, in this instance, yes, we do because we want to use it like this. And this is the designated file system for the MSI motherboard. So click on yes. And there is our file prepared. So now all we need to do is to drag this onto our USB drive, or you can use copy paste, whichever works for you. I'm just going to drag it down here into the USB drive. And then if we click on the USB drive, we'll see there is the MSI ROM file. So that is all we need to do. So we can close this window down. Now we can remove the USB drive from the computer and we can head over to our desk setup and flash the BIOS. So next of all, we can get accustomed to our motherboard and the connections. So our 24 pin main power connector is this one here over on the right hand side next to your RAM slots. The EPS connection is up here, so there's two of them on this board. You can plug it into either, it's absolutely fine, but you do need to have one of them connected. When it comes to actually making the BIOS flash, on the back of the IO shield, you'll see at the top section, there's two buttons, one for CMOS reset and one for BIOS flashback. This is the one we're gonna to need to press. And if you're not sure which port to actually plug in your USB drive to, it should be marked on the back plate and just here underneath the LAN port, it says there, MSI BIOS or flash BIOS. So now we're getting things ready. I've plugged in my power supply to the mains and the power supply is switched off. And we've got our two cables which we need connected already. So we'll do the EPS one first. This one goes into the top of your motherboard. So I just plug that in and make sure it clicks firmly into place. And the next one is the 24 pin main power. This one again on the far side of the motherboard. So just put it in and make sure it is fully seated. Sometimes they click, sometimes they don't. This one hasn't, so I'm gonna give it a little wiggle. Yeah, that is absolutely fine. So that is in the correct place. Next thing to do is to plug in our USB stick into the appropriate port on the back of our motherboard. As we said earlier, it's the one just below the LAN connection. So that is plugged in and we are pretty much ready to go. And what we wanna do next is to turn on our power supply. And now we are ready. So. If you locate the buttons on the back of the motherboard, you've got the two there, one for BIOS flashback and one for reset CMOS. And we'll press the one at the bottom and hold it for just a couple of seconds. And you should see a flashing red LED. 
that took a little bit longer than I expected. So the power supply has kicked in now. We've got a couple of LEDs on the motherboard, which are for CPU and RAM because there's nothing connected. So now essentially all we need to do is just sit and wait. Now the flashing LED on the back, which is actually hidden up inside the IO shield, you can just about see it if you get on a slight angle. So you should see the BOSS LED flash slowly, then change speeds after a minute or so. And then when the whole process is done, the motherboard should shut off. You'll probably hear your power supply click off, depending on the power supply type. The LEDs will briefly go out and then the motherboard will try to reboot itself and it'll come back on probably with the two LEDs again. But it should take roughly around about five to six minutes. So just be patient and let it do its thing. Now I've turned the lights off here so you can see it a little bit better. So you can see it just illuminates the side of those USB ports. So just keep an eye on that. If for some reason it flashes about four or five times and then stops or is a solid LED, that means that the system is unable to read the USB drive or potentially unable to read the file on the USB stick. So if that is the case, just retrace your steps and potentially you may want to swap out your USB drive. Or like I said earlier, you can also try flashing a slightly older BIOS if that is the problem. There's a few things you can do to troubleshoot it. Hopefully you can get there. If you do struggle, then of course do reach out to us on our Discord or in the comments section, and I'll do my best to help you as best I can. So I've just changed the camera angle there a little bit, just so you can see the LEDs at the top of the picture next to the 24 pin power connector. And also you can see the flashing LEDs on the side here, possibly a little bit clearer. Again, this should take about five or six minutes, so just be patient. And there we go, there was the click of the power supply turning off and it's now restarting. So we can see the LEDs on the back side of the motherboard just illuminated there. So point to those. So we are still having two LEDs, the red and the amber because there's obviously no CPU and no RAM, but our BOSS flashback LED has now extinguished. So at this point now we can turn off the power supply and we hear it click off once more. Then you can remove the USB stick and then you can carry on with the rest of your build or assembly of your PC. So there we go, there is the BOSS flashback completed. And now again, depending on what you want to do, you can try your CPU and some RAM on there just to try see if you get an output. Choice is entirely up to you. Again, if you've done this in a fully built system, you should now find that it boots to your desktop. You'll probably find that on your first boot, because it's reset the CMOS and also updated the BIOS, it will probably give you a message saying that the TPM has been reset and that it needs to be refreshed. So you can press Y to refresh it or no if you want to use your existing backed up TPM. If you haven't backed up your TPM, if it is an existing Windows installation and you have BitLocker, you potentially might not be able to get into your system. So that might be worth checking actually before you do that. So watch the whole video through before you perform the BOSS flashback. I probably should have said that at the beginning, but anyway, if you've got any problems, like I said, do please reach out to us in that comments section below. Alternatively, if you want a much faster response, head over to our Discord and you can put something in the BOSS flash room, which we have dedicated to do as BIOS flashing. I think that's gonna pretty much wrap this one up. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe. And don't forget to hit the chime notification and select all notifications. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.